Shalom, this is Reb Yosef Schreiber coming to you from the land of Israel. This week is Parshas Bahar, and it starts with the mitzvahs to um, leave the land fallow every seven years and every 50 years. And it's, the idea is to give the land a rest, uh, and during that time, which is related to what slaves are to be freed, and also um, every 50 years, a man's ancestral plot is to be returned to him. Now, what this is, is that um, when the uh, land of Canaan was conquered during the days of Yahushua, every soldier received a plot of land. And that plot was considered special in that he could not sell it permanently. Every Yovel, the 50th year, it would return to him. And it was passed to his children based on the laws of inheritance. And it says concerning basically that plot of land, that when you're selling it, you have to determine the price by the number of crops that um, the buyer will receive until Yovel, when the land will be returned to its ancestral holder. Now, the uh, commentaries, the Kliyakar, examine this and they say, wait a minute, you know, land prices fluctuate and that type of thing. Uh, how can the idea of an unfair price uh, apply to land? And the answer is that the, the idea of the land in this case is um, an example of financial, as, financial assets. Um, when buying land or many other things, there is a personal aspect to them. Uh, you like this particularly, and this is where you like to have your summer house. There is also a financial aspect where uh, this land is going to be an income-producing property. You're buying it based on the profits that it will throw off. Uh, it's similar to um, buying a, a machine for a factory. How many, how many widgets this machine is going to produce, how, and how much money you're going to make on these things. And that is the basis of the price for, that you'd be willing to pay for the machine. Uh, that's the aspect that the Chumash is talking about. And it says that, uh, it uses the term lotonu, uh, that uh, you should not squeeze your brother. Um, the Chumash, this is in line with the, what, the, the, the general tone of the Parsha, which goes on beyond... Um, the idea of selling property and the return of property, which property is returned on the seven, uh, on the on, during Yovel, um, it also talks about the redemption of slaves and what we could call interest. It's a difficult subject, um, but the idea is that when the person is selling this land that you shouldn't squeeze him. He, the reason that he is selling it is because he has become poor and he needs money now. As a result, he's interested in a lump sum, the principal, and he's willing to forego the stream of profits that will come to this land over a period of time, up to 50 years. Okay? The idea is, and what the Chumash is prohibiting, is saying, we know this guy is in a bad shape, we know he needs the money, so we're going to squeeze him. Okay? We're going to give him 
less than the economic value of the land. Now, if you want to determine the economic value of the land, you can go to uh, college or graduate school and they'll teach you how to do a discounted cash flow analysis and calculate internal rates of return and come up with all sorts of capital asset pricing models. This is ha- the, the economic value of the land. It's not the idea of a personal preference. You're not supposed to demand that the guy sell this, th- this land for less than its economic value, particularly based on his sorry state. Okay? The idea, the more general idea, which is developed in halacha, uh, is that a person is entitled to a proper profit. Okay? However, a vendor cannot squeeze a customer because the customer really needs this item. So he's going to make them pay through the nose for it. Or the customer cannot seize, squeeze the vendor. Uh, the idea of gouging uh, and chiseling is what the Chumash is coming to, to, to uh, prohibit. Is that uh, the vendor, say, is selling fruits or bread, okay, and um, he's got an oversupply of them. So the person is, says basically that he'll take him off this stuff off his hands if he gives them it to him at a distressed price. Okay, you can't do that. What it's saying is, if you need the item, if this is something that you're in, I, intending to buy, you have to pay the fair price for it. the 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 foundation is you cannot take financial advantage of somebody based on their low state or their their, um, they're a fool. The idea of um, interest, the Chumash in this case uses two words. It uses Neshech and uh, Marbit. Neshech is uh, is related to the word bite. You can't take a bite out of this guy. Okay? The idea of uh, marbid is multiplying the price, uh, but it's also riba, uh, jelly. Okay, you can't milk the guy because he's a fool. Um, and it uses the word lotonu also. It's in a different parsha, but in regards to um, basically treating um, proselytes, that uh, you cannot squeeze this guy or have some fun at his expense by saying, look, your ancestry is not that good and kind of make him squirm a bit. Okay? That is forbidden. The idea is that you cannot take advantage of the weak for fun or profit. That's what's being prohibited. Uh, the Chumash then goes into, and it's related to this, uh, the laws concerning um, uh, redeeming of slaves, Jewish slaves, and the idea is that um, first his, that that he should be redeemed, okay, and that the first people who should try to redeem him would be his relatives. But if they don't have the money or they they don't wish to do so. Uh, then anybody should try to redeem this slave. Um, in addition to that, if for one reason or another you can't redeem him, you should at least make sure that he is not abused okay, by his master. Okay? And the idea is both in the, inter- the issue of, of lending the person money or giving them money, is that you're supposed to try to strengthen the poor, not strengthen the weak. It's a, it, you, want, you don't want this person to be weak, you want him to be strong, and you should do things to strengthen him. Um, there, there's a, like a um, homilytic re, 
a relationship between that and um, the uh, laws concerning giving the land a rest. The idea is that just like the um, the land, you should be kind to it and give it a rest, but it's the lowest of the low, and it feels no pain, so too you should... Um, you should be kind to your fellow Jew who indeed feels pain and not only that but is commanded in the high service of serving God. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.